Major disaster. Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area. So may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in which he had worked. I believe yeah, that it was. Yeah, I most, I to get may I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, uncertain arrangements can be made for an executive session. And tragically, the only member who got close was Jack Brooks, and he was stopped by the chairman. But the truth of the matter is that, yes, you do have those standby provisions, and the plans are there, and the statutory uh, emergency plans are there, whereby uh, you could, in the name of uh, stopping terrorism, apprehend, invoke the military, and uh, arrest Americans and hold them in detention camps. We've been around the nation categorizing enemy activity. Now we're headed back to Austin, Texas to expose the activities there. We're here at the model United Nations Day, January 16th, 1998. We went in and discussed with a lot of people, a lot of issues, and saw the youth being educated, being trained in the ways of world governance and the growth of the world government control apparatus. Many of these people don't understand who controls the United Nations. And you're fixing to see that from the interviews that we conducted. And that's the scary part. There's so many good people engaged in this at the lower level. And that creates the group psychology, the peer pressure, that it is a good organization. I think we've conducted a balanced report and the excerpts from interviews with children, teachers, and administrators and the local United Nations recruiting organization for adults, professors, and children was here also. This is where our country is. This is where it's moving. And the scariest point of this entire discussion that we had today and this report is that we are severely lacking in teaching our youth about the Constitution of the United States and about the government of the United States. But there's plenty of money and there's plenty of help from the establishment to teach them about the United Nations. And that doesn't surprise me a bit, because we know that there is a move towards a global government, abolition of private property, the destruction of national sovereignty in the name of the group collective. And what did David Rockefeller say about the public schools? What did he say about government training centers, or what he called the public schools? He called it helpless people yielding themselves to our molding hands and these lovely intelligent but very young people are very easily molded by the establishment today so let's go inside the teaching center here at the university of texas and find out exactly what's happening to our youth of this nation what's your name under here observer uh, maybe it's just the same publisher i wrote one that was called uh, simplify your life uh -huh. that's what it's called oh, there's a whole battery of them Otherwise, the pages are not supposed to let you One of the things if you, oh, good. if you don't have... So, oh, we have lots of things, lots of plans, and we think we have a great conference. Who are some of the sponsors of the conference? Well, we are the United Nations Association of Austin, and uh, th this, this year the League of Women Voters is co-sponsoring us. Who is the head of the United Nations organization here in town? Frank Cooksey, a former mayor. Oh, yeah. Well, th yeah, that's a different court. But, but this is, uh, actually this court, the International Court meets in The Hague. Um, That's in the Netherlands, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I see y'all are wearing little worlds there. Do y'all care about the world? Yeah. Y'all are good people, aren't you? Yeah. Do y'all think the United Nations is helping? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great, great way to, like, make world peace. A great way to make world peace, mm -hmm. because through global governance we can knock out all the, all the troublemakers. Yes. Is that what y'all been talking about? Yeah, I sort of. Yeah. 
Well, that's great. I hope you all have an enjoyable time. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. What do you think about the United Nations? Cool. Yeah, it's kind of fun. No, it is really fun. cool. They decide the whole lot of world issues. Yeah. Yeah. Real peace and stuff. It's very it's really exciting. exciting. Nifty. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's great. Let's get that. Model United Nations, just one more of the many committees. Helpless young people yielding themselves to the elite's hands. I could tell them about the people that really control it, but they never understand it. It's this petty taste of power that gets them to believe that they're really doing something good when they're really working for something bad. Notice your youth are not being taught about the Constitution. They are being taught about world Constitution, world proletariat, orders from headquarters. So, Mr. Schofield, how long have you been involved in Model UN? This is my uh, fourth year. I started uh, at our first conference, the uh, Central Texas Model UN, there in the first conference. And it's my fourth year, and now I'm the Secretary General. Before the conference, basically putting every, uh, getting all the nations to come, all the students working with the schools, getting the pages and putting the staff together. And then once we're here, I just kind of direct, make sure everything's going smoothly, and kind of just observe, let the uh, Secretary go to work. How many years have they been having Model United Nations here in the United States? Uh, the oldest conference I believe in the US is 40 years and that's high school and the oldest college conference is 35 years. How long has it been here at University of Texas? This is the fourth year for the conference. I believe the group is since 1983 and way back in the 1960s, early 60s, there was a conference here in UT. Actually, Secretary Schofield was wrong. The United Nations was first called the League of Nations and failed in 19. 18 under Woodrow Wilson. It's a push for a global taxation system. And our youth are being indoctrinated. They're being brought by their high school teachers and their junior high teachers to UT and universities across the nation to learn about giving up our sovereignty. They use careful semantics in choosing the term join the nationwide movement for a more effective United Nations. It's not a nationwide movement. It's a worldwide movement. Worldwide movements are nothing new. And all through history, we've seen the blood and carnage. The UN packages all its movements in the name of the children. But if you really study their history, you find individuals like Kirk Voltheim. The fact is, Kirk Voltheim, Secretary General of the United Nations from 1972 to 1982, was a top level SS officer, a death camp operator. Yes and the United Nations attempted to protect him. These are the same people that sit around and talk about America's civil rights and America's human rights. It's all an excuse. It's a package. It's a facade. Again, Kirk Voltheim, Secretary General from 1972 to 1982. And this fact cannot be ignored. This is the history of global government and pushes for absolute power. And we have the same type of individuals here in our nation today. There you have UN peacekeeping forces in Somalia and Rwanda, torturing, burning, making children drink salt water, eat worms, cutting people's heads off. This is the modern United Nations, but you won't see this in the mainstream press. This is a push for empire. They also give awards to China. We've already gone over China's human rights, the slave labor camps, the euthanasia, the infanticide. And they've given awards to organizations like NAMBLA. They've allowed them into the United Nations. See, I have photographs here, and I have other ones. I actually have color copies of these, but I just brought these of them burning Somali children, uh, putting them in uh, cages to die. These are Belgian UN troops of them making them eat vomit and worms and salt water and uh, cutting their heads off. In fact, if you have time, I'll try to show you some photographs of that. What do you think about that? Um, torture. This has been in the Village Voice, the New American, both sides of the political spectrum. And it hasn't been in your mainstream press. These people have been punished by their respective countries, but not by the United Nations at The Hague. Uh, well, so, wait, describe to me again.